Okay, so here we have a great question. It states, which region of the heart is ischemic based on the following ECG? Okay, so say imagine some gentleman, 80-year-olds, coming in with substernal chest pain, diaphoretic, meaning they're sweating, pale, okay, and you have this ECG in front of you, okay? You notice an irregularly irregular rhythm, so this is likely a fib, no P waves, so we don't have a wandering atrial pacemaker or multifocal atrial uh, tachycardia, okay? So this is an a fib, but there's also some other changes as we see okay and when we're talking about ischemic changes all right especially with the ventricles we're looking at more of the st segment uh, and t wave all right as well as the qrs complex that we can see some changes occurring all right so this patient here what we're pretty much asking you is which region so you have to know which portion of the ecgs of this one in front of us represents different portions of the heart okay so let's just review that so you have a standard 12 lead in front of you here are the limb leads okay on the left side and you have here the precordial leads okay so you have to know that in our precordial leads these are our septal leads okay so septal and then you have v3 v4 more of your anterior sometimes v2 to v4 is also included okay and then you have v5 and v6 more of your lateral left lateral precordial leads okay in terms of the limb leads we have this one and avl as our lateral limb leads okay high lateral maybe avl you may hear it as and then you have your inferior leads two three and avf so this is inferior leads okay so the inferior leads all right so hopefully that makes sense and then this down here is our rhythm strip we have lead two all right so again two three and avf inferior leads one and avl our lateral leads in the limb leads uh in our precordial we have the septal v1 and v2 okay v2 to v4 often v3 to v4 are our anterior leads and then the lateral leads being these ones here okay so let's take a look at this what we have going on here so i'll erase this and we'll kind of take a look at uh, what we have so this person has ischemia this chest pain coming in and you have this ECG okay what are we looking at here so notice that in lead 3 lead AVF uh, you have this uh, ST elevation okay especially here in lead 3 maybe slightly here in lead AVF as well not so much in lead 2 all right but when you look at lead V2 V3 V4 v5 and v6 you have pretty much st depression okay same thing in lead one and avl all right so what we're seeing here is that whenever we have ischemia you need two contiguous leads okay and what does that mean well if we draw out our system right here's lead one here's lead two this is lead three lead avf okay now avl is up here if they're two contiguous that means they're next to each other okay so if you didn't have if you had st elevation in this but and in this but none in the others then they're not contiguous you need it in one and avl all right same thing here you need it in three and avf okay or two and avf so in this case we have the three and avf which puts us in this region okay so two contiguous leads and then you have these reciprocal changes so st elevation here and then you're seeing reciprocal changes which are the reciprocal st depression in one and avl so notice you have st depression here and here okay st elevation st elevation so if we just draw this out again okay so reciprocal changes are pretty much just opposite mirror image changes that you're seeing on the other side of the heart so avl and lead one what we're seeing up there is st depression okay and then specifically down here in lead three and avf you're seeing st elevation okay and they're pretty much opposite of each other okay different areas so those are what we call reciprocal changes that are highly uh, important in looking for any ischemic condition all right and then we said in v2 okay v3 v4 v5 and v6 
what you see here, we also have some ST depression. Okay, those are the anterior leads. So maybe there's some region of the posterior region of the heart that's also affected. Remember, the RCA, most people are right coronary dominant, meaning the right coronary artery will feed that posterior descending artery. So this may actually be an infra posterior infarct. Okay, so again, the ischemic region here is certainly this inferior portion because we have the ST elevation and the reciprocal changes in those anterolateral leads, but likely there may also be some posterior involvement as well, okay? Remember, we don't have leads that give us posterior involvement because these sit on the uh, front of the chest. We'd have to put leads on the back where we put V7 through V9, and in those leads we may see those reciprocal changes to this where there would be ST elevation, okay? So septal leads, remember V1 to V2, we don't see ST elevation in them. If it was antral septal, you may see from V1 to V4, okay? Remember, septal and then antral septal would include these, all right? If it's just anterior, you may see it uh, in V3 to V4, which may also include V2 and sometimes V5, all right? Antral lateral would be those from V3 to V6, as well as maybe one in AVL. Okay, sometimes V2 can be involved there as well. And then lateral would be one AVL and then maybe V5 to V6, okay? And those are the ST elevation changes we would see in those leads, okay? So really knowing which leads represent what portion of the heart, okay, is really important for localizing legions, okay? In this case, it may be the RCA that's included because we see that inferior involvement involving this and likely also some posterior involvement, maybe that posterior descending artery, assuming that this is a right coronary dominant patient and we see the ST depression in those anterior leads. So again, likely inferior posterior, the best answer in this case is F inferior. All right. So make sure you know this. We'll keep doing this and keep going over it. Um, but I want you to keep kind of drilling that in your mind. All right. Make sure you can recognize which areas on the ECG represent different regions of the heart. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook, and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We're the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.